my name is Christina Tomasek and I am the owner and dyer behind Serenity Fibers. Welcome to episode five of the Serenity Fibers podcast. I'm going to share some uh, news and announcements uh, first before we get into all the nice uh, projects, knitting and spinning material. But uh, so I have, we do have, I do have two um, knit alongs or make alongs happening in my, in the Ravelry group. So it's under Serenity Fibers. So if you, one is a year long sock along, which I, it's a year long sock along. You make as many socks or as many pairs of socks that you want all year long. Um, it began in February, I believe it was February 1st, and it's going to go all the way until next year, January 31st. So if you're making socks, enter in socks, and every three months I go and randomly pick somebody who completed a pair of socks in every three months, um, and they randomly get a prize. The other thing is, um, oh, and then at the end of the year, there's a grand prize. I... I randomly pick somebody to win a prize, win another prize. So uh, that's one uh, make along that I am doing. The other one is for the Sorel sweater, um, which I'm not sure what the time frame was or is, but I believe I called it the Sorel make along MCAL, not sure, but it's over there too. There's a discussion thread and there's also a finished objects thread so if as long as you go and enter in your finished objects every three months you might win a prize the other news or those are basically the announcements the other news is um well as you can see i'm in a different space we i moved me and my family moved out to uh 30 minutes south of dallas texas uh in the country on uh, 10 acres of land. We are in a house that's very old um, and we're slowly fixing it up, painting it, tearing down all the wallpaper. And as you can see, this is drywall. I already tore down some wallpaper on this side of the wall and I still have two more actually to do because this side of the wall is basically just this bookshelf and brick wall. Um, but once I do that, since we're in the middle of quarantine, actually, um, I actually might go and get some paint myself and paint this room because I kind of just want to get it done. This is going to be my craft room. Um, not to actually hold any of my product, my Serenity Fibers yarn, but actually just my, my personal yarn, my personal fiber. Um, I might have some of the fiber that I use to make Rolex for my shop um, here just because I was gifted a drum carter and I want and I want to be able to use it. There's still things that I need to go and do to fix it, which is just the carding cloth. But I do want that piece of machinery in the craft room because it's just easier. My craft room has double doors so I can always close it so it's not out in the open and the kids don't stick themselves with needles and such like that. But I might have my fiber here for uh, my business, but it most likely will be in bins like under the table or some such like that. But in general, this will be my craft room where I could get to go and craft and spin and knit um, and make and create. Um, so I, I just, really want to get this room done basically so and I don't want to wait for another month until I'm able to actually go in uh, get some painters in here but I just want to get this room done because it's my crafting room and it's just this perfect spot and what I imagined for this room it has windows on this side three big windows that overlook the backyard and directly in my view is the swimming pool and off to the side is the deck. And then further along is um, 
the forest, a pasture and, and a forest back there and a pond. You can't see from here, but there's a pond back there. <laughs> um, and I'll give you guys a good picture in just a little bit uh, so you guys can kind of see the surrounding area because it's beautiful. It's a little bit of a foggy morning today. Doesn't show so much on the camera, but there's a lot more fog a lot closer. Um, over here does in the camera doesn't it shows that the fog is pushed back and further up into the trees. So I'm gonna go walk over here and maybe see if I, I could show you how foggy it is. You could probably see some of it over there. I'll try to walk slow so I don't cause anybody to have motion sickness. But yep, this is our backyard. This is part of the 10 acres on our land that is my dye studio. I need to go and do some spring cleaning open everything up, sweep it, clean it. Uh, we have a little a pond over here and a dilapidated barn that was built decades ago. But it's starting to get warmer and even though my kids aren't old enough yet to go swimming on their own, but eventually they will be and I want a, a, a space where I can sit, I could craft, I can knit while they're out there, you know, swimming or playing in the grass and just exploring and having fun, especially with friends, where I could still keep an eye on them and not be sitting outside on the deck in a hundred degree weather trying to knit a sweater. I'd rather be inside in the nice cool air. And still keep an eye on them, especially when, you know, when they're a little older. Now my 15 year olds, you know, they can swim on their own while I'm in here watching them. But I have a five year old and an eight year old um, who are not there yet. So there is basically the major news and announcements uh, for Serenity Fibers and the podcast. So let's start with finished objects. Since I haven't been podcasting in a while, um, I have so many works in progress, I mean, finished objects, and I'm not going to get through, through them all as I gather them, I'll show you, but I'm going to show you three, four major ones, and if you wait just one second, I'll be right back because I left two in the other room. So, I'm back. <laughs> um... So if you have seen me at any of the trunk shows or festivals that I have been at, you will have seen my Find Your Fade. I have finally finished it and um, here it is. It goes, let me see, I'm showing you the wrong, oh, I'm showing you the right side. <laughs> so it's so large, I can't put it all in the frame. So I'm just going to go from one color to the next. All of these colors are Serenity Fibers colorways. This one is a, if you remember, I was doing colorways off of one of my kids' books, which I'm still going to continue. I've done six colorways so far, but this one is Take Heart Edition Polka Dot Tree. This colorway, this beautiful fuchsia, is uh, Remember Me Not. Then it goes into the Take Heart Edition uh, Dare to Be Different. And then it goes into this very light, lovely, mauvish brown, which is Rosewood. And then this colorway is a Take Heart Edition, um, Don't Be Afraid. Yeah, the other one is Dare to Be Different. This one is Don't Be Afraid. And then this nice light pink. 
is Serenity Rose. And then this was a Valentine's colorway, the one right at the end, which very much blends into the Serenity Rose, but it's a more of a speckled yarn. This one right here is um, Dainty Quainty. So, I mean, it's such a large shawl, but I love how it turned out love how it turned out especially for me because I don't like pinks I'm not a pink person and that has absolutely changed since I started dyeing I love dyeing pinks I have no idea why because in most cases I don't like to wear pink um if I had a option for to get a green shirt versus a pink shirt I will choose a green shirt every time because one it's my favorite color but it's it's beautiful. It is gorgeous. It's I act I love 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 wearing this. Um I kind of want to do another one maybe in blues and greens or shift it to like something like a purple, purple and blues or something like that, but I'm not sure if I'll do that or not. She does have other shawls that are very similar that use fading as well. And I was thinking, I think she has one that's a brioche style. Um, I'm not sure, but I was thinking maybe instead of just redoing this same piece or the same project or completing the same project in another color, I could choose one of her other shawls and do another colorway um, or another fade, another one for myself. So I'm not sure that's, maybe down the road we'll see so thing uh, uh find your fay right the other one i'm not sure what the designer's name was and if i if i find the picture and i find out how to go and show you a picture of the product i will go in or i'll go and just list it on the on um put it up here somewhere But this is the um, the garter snake cow, which has garter snake. I mean, it has garter stitch at the top, and then it goes into brioche, which I love, and it's a two color brioche. It looks like it's all one piece. I chose. She has. You should go and look at the project pictures of all the people who did this and they're just gorgeous. There was one that had a, um, like a bluish green with another uh, variegated speckly yarn and it was just gorgeous. And I was just like, ooh, I'm not sure if I want this or if I want to go with these colors. But I chose one of my, um, one of my colors, which was granite, which is the dark, um, grayish granite color and then I did a variegated um green blue and purple scheme that also had a little bit of gray in it but as the second color or as the contrasting color and let me go and flip the brioche around so you can go and see the other side so as you can see this one shows the variegated color, and of course, the right side shows the tonal that I did. And I did this in my, what was it? My cashmere sock base. It has 70% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. This was actually the first project or item that I knitted with this yarn when I first got it. I wanted to see and test it out, see if I liked the yarn. And I fell in love with this yarn so much. It has so much bounce, it has so much squish, and it's also, even though it is nice and soft and squishy and bouncy, it does still have a drape to it and it's strong at least it has some strength to it because it has 10 percent nylon so i love this i wear this all the time and then 
This was also another sample piece that I knitted up with the cashmere uh, fingering, the uh, cashmerina sock base that I got. I got this and I think it was called the Sideways Heart Tank. And I knitted up the, the absolute smallest side. And you could, sorry, it's crinkled. I actually had it at a shop um, so that they could uh, have a sample of the yarn that they were, that they had of Serenity Fibers. But yeah, it's wrinkly. Sorry about that. This is, um, this colorway is called Irish Moss, I believe. And I love it. And I'm using this really just as a sample product. I did it for me, but then even though I could still wear it, it is short for me. I would like it to be maybe an inch to two inches a little longer. Um, so I might go and knit this again, but I really want it in this colorway. So I'm going to go and dye some more of this for the shop and for me. Now, because this was too small, I did go and make myself another tank, but it wasn't the exact same tank because I was too afraid that I might not actually have enough yardage uh, to make this piece again. So I made, <laughs> I made myself a Razorback um, um, little tank. And this was, ex ex I mean, absolutely an experiment. I wanted to see if I could do this. Um, this one is a little longer, so it's not as short. It does fit me great and wonderful. Um, it, I did not follow a pattern. I wanted just to kind of create it myself. Um, just for me to kind of wear around the house, not to do anything special with. Um, I have not woven in the ends, as you could see. Um, but I actually need to because it's been some time since I've knit this and I completely forgot about weaving in the ends because usually I go and put all of my products that or my uh, projects that I finish, but I haven't weaved in the ends. I stack them up into like a pile of things I need to finish and I just go and knock them all out. Um, the next is uh, stuff that I've been knitting for my husband. My husband wanted some a hat, some gloves, socks, um, more stuff for him because of course, I'm a selfish knitter and I will continue just making like 10 pairs of hats for me and all kinds of colors. But I made my, my husband a hat and he loves it. He wears it all the time. I actually need to go and clean this one because since it's warmer, he doesn't wear it right now. It is out of my Merino worsted base, 100% superwash Merino. Um, it's a one of a kind colorway. I made it just for him. Um, I actually dyed two skeins of the merino worsted for for him for hats, a glove, and then I dyed another skein of um, my merino sock base, which is a four ply, perfect for socks, and in the same colorway. And I made him some socks. Um, I haven't made the gloves yet, but I do plan to. As you can see, I still have a skein here. It's messy. I figured I didn't really need to go and make it look pretty since it's just going to be gloves for him. But I did finish some socks for him. And I really like how they turned out. So I dyed this along with the Merino worsted base. And then I had this light gray. But here's a close up. And sorry, it's baggy. I actually don't have um, a sock blocker in his size. These are the ones for me. I need to actually buy some for him because he is actually, after wearing these, he requested more socks. Um, so now I'm on, my goal is to make him a whole bunch more socks. So I've been trying to do more for him and as you'll see in a little bit, but those are my finished objects. So let's go and do whips. So, um, let me show you what I'm actually working for my, uh, working on for my husband. 
So since he's requested that I do more socks for him, uh, I went to Bandera Fiber Fest uh, through two, three weeks ago. Um, and Crafting My Chaos, uh, another dyer, Crafting My Chaos was there. She does, she does about a, a little bit of everything actually. She does um, variegated yarns, speckled yarns, um, tonals, solids, and she also does stripes. And so I got this colorway. Let's see, I do have the tag here. It's Crafting My Chaos. In the Fall Foliage colorway. Self-striping yarn. Give you all the information. Hopefully that won't be blurry. But, um, I don't know, this colorway drew me. There was another color that I knew my husband would love, but it was another blue, and I want to make a varied uh, varied socks for him, because even though I know he loves blue, I don't always want to knit blue all the time. So I picked up fall foliage, because these really drew me. I knew that I would I, these would hold my interest instead of just being blue. Um, and I am also doing afterthought heels for him um, because I I usually do my preferred method of knitting socks is toe up. Um, I used to do two at a time, but now I do. I, I really fell in love with these little mini mini sock needles. Um, instead of doing the magic loop, it's. I love the fact, even though they're small, and I did have to go and spend some time getting used to them uh, and, and knitting with such small needles, um, I really love the fact that I could just knit in the round and around and around and around, and I don't have to, like a typewriter with the magic loop, I don't have to knit to the end of the row and then pull the needle through and then knit to the end of one needle and then pull the needle through. And it's not just actually pulling the needle through, you're also pushing the other needle in and then you knit. And then you pull the, the needle out and then you pull the needle in and then you knit. These ones I could just knit in the round, I don't have to stop and I could just knit until however uh, long I need his socks to be. So, and see I thought I, I have a serious case of not finishing or the second sock syndrome um not finishing the second sock but since i've been getting i've been i've gotten these needles what i do is as soon as i go and finish one pair of, or one sock i go and at least cast on even even if it's just a few rows or just a cast on i at least cast on for the second sock and then i'm not so bad at not finishing the second sock and completing the pair because that happened to me some time ago the very first socks that I knit for my husband I I knit the first sock and I didn't knit the second sock until a year later I'm actually I'm actually very proud of myself I I've, I've been controlling my second sock syndrome but that is one thing I am knitting the next thing that I am knitting the next thing I'm knitting is a pair of socks for me of course i can't just stop doing socks for me uh these are the drippity drop socks i forgot the the designer but i'll go and i'll go and post a picture of her product here and the designer's name but these are the drippity drop socks and they're from the cuff down with the heel and gussets and here the heel turning gussets and I'm almost done with the first sock I mean I probably still have about maybe an inch or two to go before I start the toe but actually I had these this is a it's not technically a mystery colorway I might I do have the recipe these were a test. I was trying to create colorways for the Sorel sweater, Swell, 
the sorrel sweater kits and as you can see here here are some examples and I was going for a tealy greeny blue color and I accidentally put some yellow which completely changed the color of this colorway um, I was going for this color if you can see right here and then I accidentally put yellow in it thinking that that would be a good idea and I should have known not to do that because yellow especially when you speckle with it kind of spreads everywhere and can completely turn a colorway absolutely different but I actually after I dried this skein or uh, this skein and another one I kept on looking at it and I kept on looking at it and I was like ooh that that reminds me of a golden delicious apple even though sometimes you don't see as many colors in a golden delicious apple but it just reminded me of a golden delicious apple but I just fell in love with it and I, of course at the beginning I, I hated this colorway because it didn't turn out the, the way I wanted it to but after I got through that <laughs> um, and I started looking at it I really fell in love with this color because uh, usually I don't go for yellows and this was a little bit too yellow for me but then when you kind of look back at it it was just like mm, that's a that's a nice yellowy green back here and if you know me I love greens so but here are the dippity drop drippity drop um socks that I am doing and I really I usually don't do um socks that have patterns to them because they seem to always go so much slower and I, I just love my vanilla socks I could just whip them up real quick and but I'm actually falling in love with this pattern it's very addicting it's not too slow um it is a little slower than just me knitting in the round and just doing the stock and that stitch it's not so slow that it's stopping me from continuing to knit knit it so um I've only done this, this is the first of the pair and that's how far along I am here is the color or this the cake as you can see and then I chose a mini a brown mini this was an actual leftover from one of my uh, sock set clubs from last year it was from the the centaur the centaur the centaur cl uh, colorway, Centaurus cl uh, colorway, which I loved. I love that. I love that colorway. It's actually become a regular in the shop. Um, so that's another work in progress. The next one, let's see. Oh, the next one is a scrappy blanket that I actually started some time ago. I haven't really got far because I only knit on it every once in a while. It is my actual, my attempt at using, um, using all the scraps, especially from the socks that I've been knitting because I've, I have sock mojo going. Um, and I've been knitting myself a whole bunch of socks. And I don't, I, I don't feel like I have enough yet because I could, I could go through them and then for a little while I don't have any more socks and I have to go and wash them all and then, you know, start the process over again. And I want to be able to have enough where I always have socks um, that are clean, ready for me to put on. And now that I'm home a lot and I don't go out to work, I can wear my socks all the time. So I have, of course, a whole bunch of leftover yarn and I have a big problem with um, knitting the same yarn over and over again for different projects. So I figured might as well use or use the leftover yarn to do scrappy blankets. Yay! <laughs> and I could, they don't, my yarn just doesn't just keep on stacking up. Um, so this is a Northeasterly, it's a scrappy blanket. And this one is going to be a true mashup color 
or colorways. I'm just going to throw whatever I grab out of my wicker basket and just throw it in. I do want to do another one of these scrappy blankets for me. Um, and I want to actually confine myself to a color, a uh, color way or colors. Uh, I want to do something that has purples, grays, platinums, maybe pops of blue in there. But I want to be a little further along with this one before I even think about starting another one. But here it is. This one is a sock set colorway that I did last year called um, Rainbow Crow. Rainbow Crow. And this was the actual mini that went with that. And I love these socks. If you, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture of these and they're just gorgeous. I love this colorway. This was a one of a kind. I was experimenting with uh, speckles and I love how these ones turned out. This is another uh, sock, um, a, a sock club colorway. This was called, oh, this was um, called Encantado last year from the Mythical Creatures Sock Set Club. And this is a yarn that I bought two years ago from East Texas Fiber Fest from um, Shipwreck Sheep. It's her Jackalope's Wonderlust colorway. And of course I bought it because it had all three of my color, uh, favorite colors in it. It had blue, purple, and green. Now it was a lighter green, but it was, it was be oh, beautiful. And of course I made socks with for me with that as you can see I'm using all my sock yarn <laughs> but and so this was the Jackalope's Wonderlust from um Shipwreck She next thing I think I have one two I have three more projects I've been on a I've this year I've been really wanting to do more garments and socks so that's kind of where I've been sticking to with most of my projects that I've been starting so I have two major big projects that I've been working on and then I kind of started another kind of bigger project which is kind of going faster than I expected it would which yeah, I should have expected that it it wouldn't take long to do but um I kind of kicking myself in the butt for even starting it because I still have two big projects that I need to complete and I don't want to be deterred from completing them. But I started a Sorel sweater. I'm not sure if you're if it's supposed to be pronounced Sorel or Sorrel um, sweater, but I did, let me get this straight, okay. This is a sample that I did, and I didn't do a very good job of doing a good gradient in the in between the, these two colorways. I only did a couple of of, um, of uh, turns of the two colors in the in between, but it gave me a good reference of you know it's it is going to gradiate from one color to the next. So, um, let's go and pull this out for you. So this is the sweater and this is the body of the sweater. Now I've completed the body. I've also almost completed one sleeve, which is why I'm kicking myself in the butt for even starting something else because I'm so close to getting this done. Um, the sleeve to, didn't take as long as I thought it would because I hate sleeve island. I tend to slow down on sweaters once I get to the sleeve because I got the body done. Then it takes forever just to get the sleeves done even though it shouldn't. Um, and I don't want, I, I do want to complete this. I want to be able to wear this because it's it's it was fun to make and I love the look of it. I love the purple. Um, so I just have one more sleeve to do. And of course weave in my ends but I love how it turned out. I kind of want to do another one for me because I did the small, I did the size small for me. And when I put it on, it, I mean, it fits great. Um, I'll be able to wear stuff under it, but I was thinking of, have, of making another one that's a little bit baggier. Um, not, 
I don't want it to swamp me. You know, I don't want it to be completely big, but I do want a little bit more ease or positive ease to it. So I was thinking about doing another color, but now I can't decide if I want to do this or this. So I'm thinking about it, but I also want to complete this one first and then block it out, you know, soak it and then block it out and see how it wears first before I even start it. Cause it could be absolutely perfect. And then I would have started another sweater in the same pattern for nothing instead of just using, doing another, a completely another pattern in these colorways. So, but there's my sorrel sweater. I'll show you. I actually chose to substitute the, um, the mohair for the alpaca because I love the softness of alpaca. Alpaca is one of my favorite fibers. So I did alpaca and silk. I do provide in the shop both mohair or alpaca, so you could choose either one that you want to do. And then I, it goes from this color, and then this one, to this one. Let's see if I can hold all three of these. Let's juggle some yarn here to this one. Ooh, I'm about to go and lose one of them, but this is the gradients. Um, but I'm really happy about the, about the um, design. It, the designer was phenomenal in writing out this pattern. Um, Yes, the yoke does go a little slower because you do have to, the dip stitch, you do have to go and slow down to go in. It takes a little time to do that stitch. But once you get through that, um, it goes absolutely fast because all you're doing is moving in the round. I'm gonna show you what I just started um, before I show you the other big project that I am doing. So um, I went, uh, as I told you, or recently mentioned, I did go to Bandera Texas Fiber Fest, but on the way back, I visited this beautiful craft shop because it's not just knitting; it does have yarn, but it you it has um, <clears throat> but it has um needlepoint, and which my mother went with me to the Bandera Tech at uh, the Bandera Fiber Fest, and so on the way back, we visited uh, Tinsmith's. The Tinsmith's Wife Yarn, Craft Shop Yarn Shop. Uh, it is beautiful. And when you're looking at the outside of the shop, it doesn't look like it's as big as it really is when you walk in. There's like rooms going into rooms, going into more rooms. And it's just like, oh, I really like the shop. <laughs> but I actually got some yarn there. And this is one of the yarns that I got, which is, um, ooh. It is Rowan, uh, the yarn that I got there was uh, Rowan Alpaca Classic. It has alpaca and linen, and I'll show you on my what I acquired later. But I am making myself a sweater. As again, I said, I am concentrating on sweaters and socks, um, garments and socks, basically. So I, it's a fuzzier yarn. I chose a lighter gray a green and then like a darker, I'm almost done with this skein so you can't really see it very well, but um, a lighter gray, a green and a dark gray. And because of the alpaca, it's not actually spun in the traditional sense, a um, like a tube, like a linen tube and they blue alpaca fiber into this tube and that's the reason why it had it's hairy it's it has a halo to it i'm not sure if you can actually see that halo but it's fuzzy and it's airy and it's soft um a lot softer than i imagined that it would be with the linen because i don't really knit very often with linen which i actually i've never knit with linen before i have knit with cotton um, which I don't 
really like, but <laughs> um, I am surprised that it's not as rough as I thought it would be with the linen. Um, but I'm just making a nice positive ease sweater, <clears throat> top down, um, just increasing at the sides. I want, it is going to be see-through. You probably can't see it very much right now, but if I do this, you could probably see me through that. I'm not sure if you can. Yes, you can. So you could probably see me through that. It's something that just to throw on if I'm a little bit cold or if I just want to snuggle up. I That's what I imagine for the sweater. Something that I can snuggle up to while I'm at home and I might be cold because of course, my husband likes it cold in the house. <laughs> um, this is the project that I was kind of kicking myself in the butt for starting since I have the other two big projects that I'm doing, the sorrel sweater and the one that I'm about to show you. Um, but it's actually going pretty fast. I've only been working on it for about a couple of days because I chose bigger needles so that my fabric would be a little bit more open. Um, the next project I have, I actually have in my big basket um, because I wanted to see it and I wanted to be able to um, just see it all the time because it it was, this is my project that got me through a pretty tough time actually. I want to say about July, the beginning of August, I got bit by cats. It was my brother-in-law's cat, which presented a whole mess of problems uh, for my hand. Um, I got bit on my hand right where my joint is for, to my pointer finger. She got me right on top of this joint and also right on the bottom um, on the other side of the joint. Um, it, it immediately that day swole, my whole, my whole hand swole up. I could, I could move these fingers kind of, I mean, as much as I could cause my, my whole hand was swollen, but my pointer finger, I could barely move. I mean, it was, it, it was excruciating pain. Um, I immediately went to the emergency clinic because, you know, of course something was obviously wrong. It, it was late at night and I... I couldn't just go to my um, regular doctor. Uh, so the doctors or the nurses, what's the doctor? Nurses there, <clears throat> the nurses there gave me um, an antibiotic shot and also antibiotic pills until I could go and get an appointment with my doctor. Um, and then once I did get to my doctor, uh, he put me on antibiotic pills. He gave me antibiotic shots first to see if that would um, uh, reduce the swelling and then of course get rid of the um, infection that I also gained by this cat biting me. Because of course, if you know, cats are extremely clean on the outside because they do lick themselves all the time they like to be clean but all of that dirt and bacteria just goes right into their mouths and then when excuse me <laughs> that was my kids um playing music but of course that's what's so dangerous about getting bit with by a cat is because their mouths are dirty and you can get infected um which is what happened to me so my my uh, my doctor uh, was trying to get rid of the infection just with uh, shots um, and then it progressed to uh, daily sessions of being an IV uh, antibiotics through an IV for about an hour every day and that wasn't actually helping actually referred me to a hand specialist which um, once we met the hand specialist, of course, one of the questions once I got there and got, uh, was, uh, attended my appointment, uh, he asked me questions like, what do I do for a living? What, what do I need my hand for? Uh, because he needed to gear my therapy, my hand therapy around what I needed, how I needed to use my hand and of course my finger. Um, and of course, telling him what I do, that I this finger is very important. It's, uh, one, I use it a lot to knit, but I also needed my hand to die. I, I, 
had to be able to use my hand because it was hard to even die. I had to actually had my family help me uh, dye some of the colorways and some of the orders that were coming in because I couldn't use my hand. I could, I could use this hand fine, but I couldn't use this hand. And then just moving around, I mean, literally having my hand to my side, but just moving it around, just the motion of my body and moving was excruciating as well. But, um, but in the process of telling him what I do, he, he bursted out and was like, oh, well, you know, you, you dye fiber. He kept on asking me these questions like, you, you dye yarn? you dye fiber, how do you do that, and blah, blah, blah. And then he told me, he was like, well, he dyes fabric. He loves to dye fabric and he loves to sew. And he does upholstery and he does like curtains and all kinds of other things, bags and such. But he dyes all his, his fabric himself. And he dyes um, polyester, nylon, and wool fabric. So we found out that we actually use the same dyes and a lot of some of the same techniques but not all the same techniques so it was wonderful because he knew exactly what i needed out of my hands what i needed to do um i needed mobility with my hands so uh, but once i got to the hand specialist um we found out that in the process of uh this cat biting me one uh, the uh, one tooth pierced my knuckle, of course. The other one pierced my knuckle too, um, but one of them actually shattered my knuckle or my joint. Um, and then the one on the back is the one that probably nicked my ligament, which was uh, which is why I had to go to hand therapy or therapy in general so that I could make use of my hand because I couldn't even after, I mean, this was in a process of four to six months of me being on antibiotics and going to doctors and, and trying to get my, my hand. Okay. Um, but, uh, so the therapy helped me, of course, he put me, my hand specialist put me on antibiotics, but it was, um, they put, um, a tube, a, a pick line or a catheter, a pick line, um, into my chest, into a vein that runs to my heart, directly to my heart so that it can disperse the antibiotics quickly into my bloodstream. And the, the infection actually went all the way into my bone because of course the tooth or both of the teeth pierced the bone and shattered my joint, which is why it was taking so long for the uh, infection to clear up. And it wasn't just doing it with shots or even, um, shots. Um, and so I needed to actually administer myself antibiotics, um, two types of antibiotics, once a day, was it twice a day or once a day? No, I believe it was once a day uh, for about six weeks. Um, so from start to finish, this was about almost six months of me being four months of excruciating pain. And but the last two months was more of a, I was already, I was now on the right path to making my hand feel better um, and going to therapy so that I could actually make use of my hand. Now, I can make a fist now, of course, before I couldn't, I could barely bend my finger. Um, um, I'm still gaining strength in my finger, but it's a lot better now. I can do a lot of things with my finger. Now, if I don't, if I, if I overuse it, there's a lot of times that by the end of the day, I'll go and pick up something and my hand will a little bit, you know, wiggle because it's, it's tired. You know, I do feel it if I push my, my finger down, but I'm gaining my strength back because I'm still exercising it. So it's, it's a lot better. And of course it was wonderful going and seeing my hand specialist because we had a lot to talk about that were, that was, you know, similar. We both died. We both actually crafted. Um, so, it, you know, it's wonderful, but the project that I was working on, or of course I couldn't knit for, for a long time because my hand hurt and I used this finger to actually wrap the yarn around my needles. And, um, I could actually spin 
that that was actually my saving grace um I could spin because all I do with this hand is, is hold the fiber. So I could actually do this and keep my hand still and use this finger to actually draft and spin. Um, but as I gained more motion to my finger and as it wasn't hurting as much, I did slowly start knitting. And I don't know why, you would think this wouldn't be the project that I would start, but this is what I started. Um, it was, it's the Ellen Cardigan. Knit with fingering weight yarn um, in the basket weave stitch. Um, so, and this was the only thing I knit on. As soon as I could start knit, knitting again, this is the only thing that I knit on. I didn't knit socks, I didn't knit anything else. This is what I knit on. And, or this is the only thing project that I knit on. And so I have the body done. And it's, it's a very long cardigan. Of course, as you can see, it's, it took a very long time to do. It's fingering weight yarn. Um, I have, one sleeve completed. Now um, I picked up for the other sleeve and all I have to do is knit that and then it comes, it does come with a collar. The collar around the neck is pretty long so it will fold and it looks beautiful. Um, but this helped me through that tough period in my life um, because at the beginning that this all happened, you know, my, my regular doctor was like, we we don't know if you'll be able to keep your finger. And I was like, what? I, I got to keep my finger. This finger's not going anywhere. We're going to, it's going to be okay. <laughs> you know, but it, it was mind blowing that something as simple as a cat bite could, I, I could lose a finger from that. Um, so of course for months and months, almost four months of just being with my doctor, not even going to the hand specialist yet, you know, it was a real big fear that I might not be able to have my finger. I may not be able to use my finger ever again. It may not be useful to me anymore. So, you know, that's when I started exploring, okay, how am I gonna use, how am I gonna knit? How am I gonna con continue knitting? Um, other ways to knit, you know, I'm gonna have to be I'm gonna to have to wrap my finger or my yarn around this finger and um what's it called the english style where you it's a term and i forgot it it's completely went out of my head um throwing um i'm gonna to have to learn how to throw my yarn or throw yeah throw the working yarn around the needle um because i don't i i know how to do it I've done it a few times, but I'm not, it doesn't come naturally to me. It, it's very slow. But of course, if I did it over and over again, eventually, you know, I would get the hang of it. Um, but it was still devastating at that time, okay? Yeah, that's all my works in projects, oh, progress, works in progress. I am actually going to show you, or move on to spinning, all the spinning that I have done. Um, I, I've been spinning a little bit. Uh, well, during this time, of course, I spun a lot because it was the only thing I could do. But since I've been able to knit again, I've been sticking to knitting. I haven't really spun a lot, of course, as you could see why. So I did a true woolen spun um, yarn, which is right here. And I am, I want to actually start trying to uh, do more true woolen spun yarn. I usually do a lot of worsted or semi worsted. Um, but after I did this one, it's just, it's so airy. It's so fluffy. It's light and it's bouncy. It's squishy. So I'm going to start doing a little bit more here and there. Try to get better with my technique because it wasn't consistent. Of course, it's kind of hard to go and be consistent, especially when you're um, spinning woolen. So I did this. The other thing that I did was I did, and that was a fiber that I just got and dyed. This is fiber that I got, um, I think it was the, you know, the Christmas 
Christmas time um, gifting that a lot of people do online, Instagram especially. I was gifted this. It's a get your wish gift. And a lady, a wonderful lady, gave me painted roving, or wait, hand painted roving, four ounces of Polworth, a Calypso by Greenwood Fiberworks, which can't see all of it, but here's her logo. And I wanted, of course, you know, I love blues, greens, so she gave me this. And I wanted to do a fractal yarn because I've never really done a true fractal. Um, hopefully that's focusing for you. So I really like the outcome of this. It was really, really nice. And now I want to go and knit something with it, but I'm not sure what I'm going to knit yet. Um, I also spun some blue yarn i dyed this and i believe it's su it's not super wash it's more just a uh, non-super wash merino i did this blue because i figured i could go and make my husband a hat or you know some stuff with that but i wanted to um with this skein i wanted to uh explore putting beads into knitting so this is a two-ply yarn it is Superwash Merino and Bamboo. And I believe it was a 70-30 blend with 30% being Bamboo. It's actually the same skein or same blend as this one that's kind of up here. It was from DFW Fiber Fest last year out of the Enchanted, no, two years ago. It was out, out of the Enchanted Fibers booth. Um, and I really loved it. Really, really loved it. Um, I wanted, I did blend like half the braid. I actually blended into my hand cards and actually added Selena into it because I wanted it to sparkle along with adding beads to it. But the other half, I believe I, I didn't put any, um, I didn't put any Angelina in it because I wanted to maintain some of the light green out of the platinum silver that's, or gray that's in here. So you can hardly see it, but there are some points of the green in the skein and let's see if I could get you a picture of some of the um, beads there's there's one bead I don't know if it's gonna focus for you or not but but there is a bead in there I didn't put a whole bunch of beads because uh, I didn't want it to be riddled down with beads I did want um, this to not be as heavy and just loaded with beads um but i did make a two ply actually in the middle of spinning this is when i actually got bit in my hand so i couldn't i stopped spinning it for a while until i could pick it back up again so i think because of that and because of course you know i was i was still in pain when i did start spinning it uh it didn't turn out as consistent as i had hoped or as i wanted it as you could kind of see here this uh, piece of string or this piece of yarn is a lot thicker than uh, most of the other skein and I think it's, it's just because I stopped it at the middle of, of spitting this and then it of course wasn't consistent because of that. The other thing that I actually wanted to try my hand at was um, doing cabled yarn. Now not implied yarn but actual cabled yarn which is where you uh, you could do as many single plies as you want, but I, I chose to do four single plied yarn, yarns, which were um, all spun in the Z, no, yes, in the Z direction, or one direction, any direction that you chose, but they all were uh, plied or spun in the Z in one direction, but over spun. And then you plied two going in the other direction, the opposite direction, you plied the other two into the opposite direction. So then you had two, two ply yarn, yarns, and then you spun those two yarns together going in the Z direction again, which actually I think I flipped it around. Uh, when I did it, I did, I plied the singles in the S direction, then I two plied the two two plies in the Z direction and then spun the two two plied yarns in the S direction. Um, now the first skein that I did that with was this one, which was another uh, fiber that I got from the um, Christmas gift. Um, oh, 
uh, gift exchange, um, which is wool gatherings, hand painted yarn and hand painted yarn and fiber. It is it is a hundred percent blue face luster, which is the first time that I actually spun a hundred or spun with a hundred percent blue face luster. I think I did go and have some blended into some other rovings that I had, but never a hundred percent. Um, so, uh, and of course it's, it, it was a full, uh, four ounce roving. Now with this one, I don't think I divided up the roving in any particular way. I just wanted, I was more concentrated on trying to achieve a nice chain ply and learn the technique. Um, I think I did okay. Um, you probably won't be able to see it very much. Let's see here. This is a good show. Um, I really, really enjoy, see if I could get that to focus for you. I'm actually in the works of saving up money for a nice camera that will do a better focusing than my phone. Um, this was a chain plank yarn. And I really enjoyed doing chain ply, but I wanted to be a little bit more consistent. So I did go and spin it a chain, another chain ply, which is here. Um, I still didn't do such a great job. I think I need just more practice. So I'm going to start practicing this more. Um, this was just a non superwash merino and, um, since I really like how it is, a uh, chain ply is, how squishy and airy it is, I really want to go and learn the te technique a little bit better. Um, but I did go and add Angelina into this one as well. I uh, hand carded it and I think I, I did roll legs out of that. Now the other, only other things that I've done, the only other thing I did was this roving here and this is shaky k fibers this is 19 micron super super fine merino wool um i actually got these two rovings together my daughters picked it and they were just a repeatable colorway this one was purple pink and like a, a nice reddish orange as you can see it's very bright and then the other daughter uh this was the eight-year-old daughter picked this one or my eight-year-old the five-year-old picked the greens, blues, and purples. And I did this, I spun this up as a, it was my very first end plied yarn. I spun it up so that it would have uh, repeatable blocks like self-striping yarn because I'm thinking about either doing socks or leggings or arm warmers for them. Maybe fingerless gloves with a long arm. Um, for both of these. Now this one is going to have bigger segments and blocks of color where this one I stripped down a little bit more so that the blocks of color would be smaller and you'd have more repeats. Um, and this was also end plied as well as this one because I wanted to maintain the color. I didn't want the colors to mix. So, um, which is, oh, I really like the my, uh, 19 micron merino it is just gorgeous which is why now now that i'm um, spinning fire or dyeing fiber for my shop i actually provide a 19 or eight actually a 19 micron super fine merino which is just gorgeous to handle and spin with um that is really all of the things that i've been doing the only thing that i have acquired lately um the last, the one thing that I did go and get from the East Texas Fiber Fest last year was Hewitt Hand Dyed Fibers. It, this was actually her colorway for the East Texas Fiber Fest last year, and it, it, it is called Piney Woods. And of course, she she actually put it on Instagram, and I was like, oh, I gotta have that because I love greens. It is my thing. But there it is. And then when, um, these two yarns I actually acquired from my knitting guild. Um, I won these yarns. We did a, a white elephant for Christmas last year. And I won 
This it's fleshy yarn, fingering weight, 50 grams. And this one, I want another skein too in it, but I am doing some socks, or I kind of already did that some socks, and I'll just show them to you next time because I don't have them here. But um, your 50 gram Felici fingering weight socks, there's about 218 yards in these, and the yarn is so soft and it is actually very dreamy to knit with. Um, now, when I went to the Bandera Tech Fiber Fest three weeks ago, and me and my mother visited the Tinsmith's Wife yarn store, I did pick up some yarn. Um, one was, this is the actual yarn for the sweater that I showed you. It is the Rowan Alpaca Classic. It has super, oh, it's cotton, not linen. Oh, why, well, I told you a lie. It's, it's cotton, not linen. So, so, of course, I love green. As you can see, that's the reason why I chose these colors. And the other thing that I got, which I'm really happy that she had it in her shop, it's something that I've wanted for a while, but I've, for some reason, I've always stopped myself from actually getting this yarn. Um, it's from Handmaiden. Fine, it's Handmaiden Fine Yarn, and it's her actual Handmaiden, um, um, a maiden hair uh, skein yarn blend. Um, it has 76% silk, 23% mohair, and 10% nylon. But what really is interesting about this yarn is the construction of the yarn, how they do it. Um, it's squiggly, as hopefully you can see here. Yes, it actually does show it great. Um, I've been wanting this yarn for a while. It's I've just love the look of it and I love the feel of it it's so shiny it is so soft but this this mohair is just wonderful um I love it um and because of I guess because of the amount of silk that's in here it's just it makes the mohair even softer I guess and of course it's shiny so she had some of this so I grabbed a skein um the colorway is Deepest Emerald, and the base is called Maiden Hair. And I am so glad that I got it. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna make yet. It's one of those kind, it's gonna be, I know it's gonna be one of those kind of yarns that it's going to sit on my shelf for a little while until I find the perfect thing to make. And it is 328 yards, 100 gram. So, yeah. And I really love the color. Isn't it great? Yay. So I'm really happy. I'm really happy she had this. Um, uh, I actually might go back uh, to her and make a trip out there to um, the Hill Country. It's in the Hill Country in Texas. It's beautiful. So, but yeah, that's about everything. And thank you everyone for joining me here today. Uh, stay safe, especially in this time, stay safe. Uh, um, let me know what you guys are knitting and creating, especially in this time where we're at home doing, I mean, doing a whole bunch of knitting, doing a whole bunch of crafting. Uh, there'll be more videos to come. Uh, there will also be more videos to my spin diary. I might also do some like a day in the life, especially during this time so that we can just see other grown-ups like me I don't see any other grown-ups except my, except my husband so um, it's nice seeing that there's people out there doing stuff um, and sometimes some sometimes you just need the noise the noise of other people talking uh, which is a, what I do a lot during the day especially when I'm dying and working or cleaning I like to go and listen to po podcasts of all my favorite podcasters um, and I like to hear them talk um, so, uh, more videos coming soon and thank you for stopping by. See you again.